in place. But as many times, a few times I've been in the midst of the Spirit of God always brings up one thing, just the unity and love. So today, we are going to emphasize on unity and love. Amen? If we are fasting and praying, we could be praying your heart out and not accomplishing anything because there's, in our midst, there's no unity. And in our midst, we're not walking in one accord. Amen? So this is very, very important. Because see this wall that holds this, house, uh, this uh, building? The, every brick is joined with the cement. Do you agree with that? Every brick is joined together with the cement from the top, from the bottom, from the middle. That would create a wall. Amen? Paul says that ye are the temple of God. You are the living stones. This is a stone. We are not like rocks, but we're living stones. And we should join together with each other in hand in hand. Amen? To build what? The temple of God. We are the temple of God, the Bible says. We are the temple. We are the church, not this building, not the name New Awakening. We can compose the temple. We are the temple of God. God abides in us. Amen? God doesn't abide in heaven. He's in us. Christ in me, the hope of glory, Paul says. Amen? So as we come to this concept, which is, is the binding, it's the glue. Unity and love is the glue, is the cement that holds the two blocks together. If the glue or the cement is not there, what's going to happen? You can put the bricks together, what will happen? It will fall apart and collapse. Correct. This wall will not stand. Amen? Amen. That's why unity and love is, is, the, is, the, is the bond. It's the glue. It's the, the cement that holds us together. Amen? For us to be that building, to be that living stone. Hallelujah. Where love is, there is unity. Where it is, you cannot have unity without love. Where love is, two people love each other, two friends love each other, husband and wife love each other. There's unity in the marriage. That marriage cannot stand if there's no love. That business, that organization, that church, that ministry cannot stand if there's no love. There's no unity in the people. Amen? It's going to fall apart. Hallelujah. So I want to give you an example. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11. Let us see what l unity can accomplish. What, when we're in one accord, what it can accomplish. Who's going to read for us? Let's, uh, Chantel, can we have another mic? Whoever wants to volunteer. Genesis 11. Genesis chapter 11, verse 4 to 5. Amen? Can we have it on the screen, please? Those who don't have a Bible, please read along with us. Just a moment. Hold on. Are we together? Everybody has it? Go ahead. Genesis chapter 11, verse 4 to 5. The Bible says, Then they said, Come, let us be. No, no, no. That's not correct. Is that and said go? Are we together? Is that the right one? Yeah, it's eleven. Okay. Ex exactly. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Verse five. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. Building. Let's go back to verse 4. And the Lord let us build us. Hmm? And they said. This is different from what you're reading. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Go ahead. And they said, come let us build ourselves a city 
and a tower with its top in the sky. Let us make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Okay, okay, go ahead, sit down, sit. Keep that verse up there. Now, what, what is it? What is their agenda? What is their mandate? What is their plan? What do they plan to do? Hmm? To build a tower. Amen? So they have an agenda. They have a plan. They have a strategy. They have an idea. And they want to put it into action. They have a vision. Amen? They have a vision that they want to build a tower that's going to reach up to heaven. Amen? Bam. Again, and they say, let us make a name for ourselves. That's the second agenda. They want to make a name for themselves. They want the whole world to know. And then otherwise we'd be scattered all over the face of the earth. So what do you see here? Unity. They're united. They have a, a goal. They have set a goal that they want to accomplish. They have a plan. They have a strategy. And they want to make a name for themselves. Amen? This is what it takes. Unity. United. For them to accomplish. But what happens next? Verse 5. Read on. And the, the Lord came down to look over the city and the tower that they were building. Next verse. Verse 6. Sorry. Go ahead. And the Lord said, if as one people, see, one people, they became as one people all united together for, to accomplish one purpose, to accomplish one goal. They have one vision. They were all having the same language. They have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. See, this is the words of the Lord. He said, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing that they plan to do will be impossible. Amen? Amen? That's the words of the Lord. It's not the people. He said, God is saying, when people come together in unity and they have a plan, they have a strategy, they are planning to do something or build a tower for, the, for their name's sake, the, the Lord himself says, uh-uh. These people are together. They've all come together now. They're gonna, they have made up their mind to build a tower to go to heaven. Amen? When we have built, made up our mind to do something, we're going to say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this. You make up your mind. You're going to do something. So you carry that out in action. But first, it's in your mind. It's a vision. It's a dream. It's a thought. It's, it, it came into your heart. Oh, let's do this. So everybody come together, they gather and they do something. This is what it takes. This is what unity can accomplish. Amen? Yeah. Unity can accomplish great things when we are in, in unity, united together. So what, what happens? It says there's nothing is impossible for them. Verse 7, read on. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so they will not understand one another's speech. There's so, there's so much involved uh, about this Tower of Babel that I don't really want to focus on the other things. Why they were doing that, the purpose was they were rebellious against God. There was a rebellion in their heart against God. Oh, we're going to reach to heaven, we're going to reach up to God. If that was the cause, the purpose of it. That's why. But I don't want to touch that area where there's so much. You, could, you can really talk about the Tower of Babel. There's so much involved. But the point I want to emphasize is to make out is that they were united together. They had a plan. They want to do something. And even the Lord said, let us. See? Let us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go down and confuse their language so they do not understand each other. So God had himself to intervene in that situation for to what? 
to cancel their plan, to disannul it. Because their intention was not right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go on to Acts, uh, Amos. Chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Amos in the Old Testament. Amos. Are you reading? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. It Amos chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Natasha. Three what? Yeah, I need her. Is she okay? Three. Yeah, I wanted to, her to do something. I showed her earlier. Three. Three one. Okay. Three one. Mr. Viola. Amos three one. Hear this word the Lord has spoken against you. All people of Israel against the whole family. Sorry. Verse no. three to five. Verse three to five. Do Amos two. three to five. Okay. Amos three. Um, verse three. To five. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Does a lion roar in the thicket when he has no prey? Does, does he growl in his den when he has caught nothing? Does a bird fall into a trap on the ground where no snare has been set? Does a trap spring up from the earth, when there is nothing to catch. Amen. Praise God. Let's go back to verse 3. Can two walk together? Unless. Can two walk together without agreeing? Agree? No. We cannot walk together. We cannot walk together. We cannot accomplish the goal. We cannot accomplish the agenda. We cannot accomplish the vision. That God has given us unless we walk together. Two people who don't agree with each other in a marriage or in a business. It's a, it's a business deal or two business owners. If they don't agree with each other, then what, what's going to happen? The business is going to fall apart. If two people in a marriage, they don't agree with each other, what's going to happen to that marriage? The of marriage course. will fall apart. Uh -huh. If two people in an organization or a church or anywhere... What's going to happen? If people don't come in agreement, everything will fall apart. Amen? Amen? So the unity is so important. It's the, like the foundation. It's the glue that holds us together. Amen? Amen? Just like the bricks together, they stuck together with each other. The glue, the cement. Hallelujah? Amen. Okay. So we have a one agenda, one purpose, one goal, one vision. And in order for us to accomplish that vision, accomplish that agenda, is to become united in one. Uh, Natasha, can you please put up what I asked you to put up earlier? Okay. We're going to see something here. And another one? What is this? What is this? It's an army, right? Another one? Okay, what do we see here? Observe, what do you see? They are together, they are united, they have one purpose, they have one goal, they have one vision, they have one purpose, amen? It's to fight, fight whom? The enemy, amen? If this army we're supposed to disagree with each other. And they say, ah, I don't want to have work with you. I don't want to do anything with you. Forget it. So what would happen to the army? The army will fall apart. The when the army falls apart, what happens? The, the enemy will what? The Creep in, in our midst, where there's no unity. So, it's amazing that in the book of songs, 
Okay, close that. We're going to book of song, the song of Solomon chapter 6, verse 4. The Lord is talking about the book of the song of Solomon is a beautiful, beautiful book. And if you read that, the book of Solomon, it's like the church, the bride of Christ is, is, is how do you say, it? how much God loves the church, how much God loves the bride. And, and he says here, verse 6, you are as beautiful. Are we together? Sister Viola, go ahead, read. Oh, you can read off the screen, my dear. Read off the screen. You, you, are, beautiful, yes. you are as beautiful as Tiza, my, my darling, darling, lovely as Jerusalem. Yes. Are we ins inspiring, inspiring as an army with banners? Amen. Read it again. Did you get you, it? You are as beautiful as Tiza, my darling, lovely as Jerusalem. Yes. Are we inspiring? Us, us all inspiring. It, are we? Inspiring yes. as an army with burners. What are we? What are we? We're an army. Yeah. What are we? Army. Say army. army. We are an army. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are what? Beautiful. And we are what? Lovely. And we are what? Awe inspiring. What does the word awe mean? <gasps> when they look at you and they see the beautiful bride, they go, <gasps> Wow, wow, what a beautiful bride. Amen. Inspiring, inspire other people. Hallelujah. Amen. The church of God, the church of Christ has identity crisis. We do not know who we are. If we only knew and we could see through God's eyes that how he loved us so much that ye are the light of the world. Ye are the salt of the earth. You are beautiful in his eyes. You are lovely. You are all inspiring and you're my army. Amen? Amen. You're my army. What does the army do? Army fights a battle. Why does the army fight a battle? Why? Why do we fight a battle? Because we have an enemy. Amen? Amen? We have a real enemy. Why are we fasting and praying? Because we have an enemy. Correct? But we're an army. But this army to be prosperous and in this army to be successful and be victorious what does it have to do you have to be united, have to be united. amen we have, we have to be one in one accord correct amen that's why the unity in our midst is so important where there's no unity the enemy will creep in where there's no unity there will be discord. Where there's no unity, there will be no love in our midst. Where there's disunity, we'll, we'll not care about each other. We just like, okay, I'm here. We don't, the Bible says, you are your brother's keeper. Amen? We are keeping, and I, oh, my sister, Jonah, where are you? You didn't show up for Bible study. I miss you. You know? Like we have to be a brother, sister's keeper. Oh, brother Paul, I didn't see you in church today. Are you okay? Is everything fine? Give a call. Care about each other. Show love for one another. Show concern for one another. You don't know, maybe they're going through a difficulty. Maybe they're going through some trial. Can I pray for you? Pick up the phone, pray for your brother. Pick up the phone, pray for your sister. Encourage one another. What, how does the army operate? When one person is wounded in the army, they, they, he got shot and the, he got wounded. And what do the other ones do? They carry him. Yeah. They carry him with, okay, then, come on, let's go. Run. They carry him like this, both arms. They carry, come, let's go. She's wounded. They carry her home. We don't leave her there to die. Do we do that? No. We're not supposed to do that. We don't leave our brothers and sisters. Ah, he's having trouble. Ah, that's his problem. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. 
You understand what I'm trying to say? We don't, we don't, we don't behave like that. But because we love each other, we're an army together. We gotta hold hands and support each other, carry each other's weight, carry each other's uh, 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 problem. Whatever you're dealing, your if your issue is my issue. We have to become together and pray and battle that enemy. The enemy that's fighting you is the same enemy but battling us. We have only one enemy. Amen? Amen? Praise God. See the importance of unity? We have to be an army. We are, are an army with banners. What does it mean by banners? Our banner is what? We're victorious. We're already conquerors. We're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We're not a losing army. We're a victorious army. Why? Because the Lord has already given us our weapons. Our weapons are not carnal, but what? For pulling down, they are mighty. Our weapons are not in the flesh. We don't fight each other with the flesh. We don't fight the enemy with the flesh. We fight him with on our knees. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are we getting somewhere? Yes. Let's look at John. John chapter, uh, St. John chapter 17, verse 21. Here we have Jesus is praying to the Father. And just before he's ready to leave and to die on the cross and carry his cross, he is speaking to the Father. And this is amazing what, he, uh, what he's praying for the people. He's praying for his disciples. He's praying for his believers. Those who, he's praying for you and I. He says, those who are yet to come. Hallelujah. We're glad that Jesus is our intercessor. He's the high priest. He intercedes on our behalf. Amen? When I can't pray for myself, I know Jesus is praying for me to the Father. Amen? Amen. Verse 21. Uh, John... John the Gospel, chapter not 17. the letter. Chapter 17, verse 21. Uh, Pastor Kathy, can I start with verse 20? Yeah, 21. Uh, John 17, verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Okay. Then verse 21. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in just as you are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may be believe, believe that you have sent me. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we getting that? What is Jesus praying for his people for us? He didn't pray for his disciples, so uh, Father. Unity. May you prosper them. May you increase their faith. Mm. May you anoint them. May you empower them. May you... Um, anything else. But what did he pray for? What is he praying for? I want to hear from you. That they be one. What does it, how, what does it mean to be one? United, United together, together as one. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. So he's saying... Just as uh, may they be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Father is in Jesus and I am in you, uh, just as, and we are in the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. See that? They may be one just as you, Father, are in me. And I am in you. They also be one in us. So what? What will happen when we are one with, with, with Jesus? What is going to take place? What is going to happen? So the world may believe. May believe. You sent me. Hallelujah. Amen. How will they believe? It doesn't say they will believe. Oh, oh, oh power them so you, they do miracles and signs and wonders and do awesome things that they you believe. No. One factor, one thing that Jesus prayed for his 
his disciples. It's for them to become united as one. Nothing else. When, when the people of the world come in here, they will see love in us. They will be one together. There will be unity in us. We're not uh, gossiping, oh, so and so, sister, did you know that? And the new believer, he comes and he's here, he hears that. Oh, look at that. The, what kind of church is this? These people are talking bad about each other. You understand what I'm saying? You're putting each other down. In the book of Acts, when Paul was going to the uh, Tartus to persecute his people, a light came upon Paul, and what did the voice say? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? What does that mean? When we persecute or we talk about, we're persecuting our brother and our sister. Amen? He, Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting my children? Why are you killing them? Why are you doing that? He said, why are you persecuting me? Why did he say that? Because he is the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Amen? We are the body of Christ. Instead of encouraging one another and looking at each other that she's a child of God, no matter what her weakness, what her strength, she's still a child of God. Jesus died for her. He paid a price for her. He purchased her. We are purchased by the blood of Jesus. We are precious in the sight of God. So who am I to say anything to her about her? Jesus is going to be not with happy to, with me because he said, why are you persecuting me? You're persecuting my child. This is my daughter. Let me deal with her. You understand what I'm saying? So when we see some issue or some child, or whatever, we, not uh, appropriate for us, or we don't understand why they behave the way they do, let's pray for them. Amen? It's because we're persecuting the child of God. If we're saying something about someone, we're persecuting Christ. Not, not so, so where's the unity then? We're an army. We're the body of Christ. There's no unity in us. There's division among us. Amen? So let's bring, uh, work on that. Amen? Psalm 133, verse 1. Are we learning something today? Are we learning the importance of uh, unity and love? One thirty three. Verse one. Sister Viola, verse How good and pr how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Amen. Go ahead, read on. It is like a precious oil poured on head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the, the dew of Hermon we are falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even Amen. life forevermore. That's what I want to emphasize. And for there the Lord commanded a blessing. The Lord has to command a blessing. Amen. Amen? If we're not uh, receiving our blessing, there's, there's a hindrance to what, what it could be. We were not united. What, it, what is blocking our, our blessing? With his unity, with his love, the Lord is going to command a blessing on new awakening of the church. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. The unity brings blessing. That's what he's saying. Unity, com he command, unity brings blessing. It brings love. We are able to accomplish that what God has called us to do. The new awakening of the church, we have a vision. We come together in unity and love to fulfill and the purpose and the vision that God has called us to do. Amen? Proverbs chapter 6. One thing God hates. Actually, seven things God hates. These six things the Lord hates. Verse 16. Chapter 6, verse 16. 
Yeah, there are six things the Lord hates. Yes. In fact, seven that are d- detestable to him. Amen. Hot eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Amen. See that? These are the things that are not are pleasing to God. He says the one who sows discord. What is discord? Disunity. To creating discord in among, uh, among the, uh, the believers. Speaking about one, and say, oh, so and so is like that. Right. You're creating discord. So that sister that you spoke about, she's not going to like you, and then that causes cr- discord, dissension. That's the spirit of dissension, the spirit of dis- uh, unity. Amen? Like what is the purpose of the, the spirit of dissension? It's for us not to be united together, not to accomplish what God has called us to do. Amen? So disunity is something what God hates. He doesn't like that. He wants as you as a parent, your children, if you have children and they're always fighting with each other, as you as a parent, are you going to be happy about it? As a mother... You, she loves it when the children are getting along with each other. They're happy, they're playing, they're doing things together. Amen? Doesn't that make you happy? We are mothers. We know what it's like when we deal with children. Amen? So the God himself, he's our heavenly father and we are his children. And it's important for us to love one another, to get along with each other. But this, this unity will bring us, tear us apart. What is a good example about disunity? Job and, uh, 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 Job and Isaac. Was it Isaac and? No, Esau and, J- Esau and Jacob. Both were twins. Both were born from the same mother. Both grew up in the same family. But yet what? There's no unity. There's no love. Amen? The same thing with Ca- uh, what happened with Abel and Cain. Because Cain's, um, um, Abel's sacrifice was accepted, Cain hated his brother for that. Instead, he should go back to God and say, Lord, where have I failed you? May, can we make a, 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 a correction? Can we, you know, s- resolve that situation? Instead of him coming to God and saying, Lord, what was the reason why you, my sacrifice was not acceptable to you? Instead, he was angry and he took it out on his brother who, who had, whose uh, uh, sacrifice was acceptable. Amen? So that's why we, we t- tend to take things in our own hands and hurt each other or harm each other. Amen? Amen? God is a good God. He wants us to live in love. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians, Ephesians, verse three. Chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Make are we every, together? Are we there? Ephesians 4, verse 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through <coughs> the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope, when you were called. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Okay, can you read on to verse 11? Okay. After this, verse 11. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Amen. Verse 7. Verse but 13. unto every one of us is given grace according to the measures of the gift of no, Christ. 11, 7, sorry. 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. 
read on for the perfecting, perfecting for the perfecting of saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ read next 13 till we all come in unity of Stop faith right there until he's given us pastors he's given us evangelists he's given us all these gifts these are the fivefold gifts in the ministry he's given us them till means god is waiting for us to come until he says all come into the unity amen so what is god waiting for the church to do to do what come together in unity of the faith read on of the faith yes and of the knowledge, knowledge of the son, of, son god, of god unto perfect man perfect man unto the pressure of the stature stature unto, of the fullness of christ sorry sorry apologize unto the measure of the stature of mm -hmm. the fullness of christ amen so what is God waiting for? What, is, what, is, what are we waiting for? We're be waiting for the body of Christ, the church, to come together in the unity of the faith, knowledge of the Son of God, two, three, to become a perfect man. We, God is, ask, is waiting for us to reach to that perfection until the measure there's a measure that we have to reach. There's a standard that we need to reach to. Amen? There's a standard that's required. Until uh, to the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen? Are we together? Are we understanding? Yes. We're together, right? Amen? So this is what God is waiting for the body of Christ, the church, to come together. Look here we have in this block here, we have so many churches ministry but yet we don't know each other we don't know that uh, our next door neighbor pastor he comes and say hi bye i'm here pastor and all that but all the other churches we don't know them we have no clue do you understand we should get together all these ministries come together for a night prayer come together to do some function together why don't we come together and come to jane and finch and do a function together Let's come, all these churches come together and do evangelism at Jane and Finch or go downtown to do evangelism. Why is the church divided? Why are they worried about their ministry? They worry about their members. They don't want them to come here. We, you know, they have a different mindset. They, th they, they think, pastors think, oh, you're here because you're stealing my ch people. You're stealing my church. The church is not belong to the pastors. The church is belong to Jesus Christ. He died for the church. We belong to him. And for us to behave like that and to show that kind of attitude is not what? Not united. We're not united. So God, Christ himself, is waiting for us. He's waiting for us to come to the unity of the faith unto a perfect man. To the measure, there's a measure, there's a requirement, there's a standard that is required for the body of Christ to reach to that standard, to that level. Amen? God is expecting us to, to do something. We can't be just sitting. We have to work together in unity and oneness. If there's not unity in our midst, how can we go and witness to others? Amen? That's so important. This is so important. And where can God command his blessings? Because there's no unity in our midst. Read on. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Throughout the whole in the New Testament, the emphasis, the, what Jesus prayed for, he said he wants the church to become one. He wants us to be united in one mind. He said, be ye of the same mind. Amen. First Peter uh, chapter, chapter three, three verse, eight. verse eight. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love, love. Be sympathetic. Pitiful. Love as brothers. Uh -huh. Be compassionate and humble. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Finally, he says the final touch. He says, be all of one mind. Think alike. Be of one mind. How do we think alike? I'm not going to think of you less than of myself. He says, look upon your brother as yourself. Love your neighbor as just the same as I love myself. Let me do good unto others as I, I'm good to myself. Let me be good to uh, uh, my brother and sister. Love as a brethren. Be pitiful. Be pitiful means to show pity. To show pity to your brother. Your brother is suffering. Maybe there's no f they lost a job. Maybe he doesn't have food. Let's show pity and all come together and say, My sister, you, you don't have a job. Do you have food on the table? Do you have uh, something to eat? Do you have, you know, to show concern. To show pity on one another. Uh, whatever challenge or situation they're going, be courteous. Courteous. What does a courteous mean? Be courteous. Show kindness. Sh not being rude. Be courteous. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we together? Verse 32. Acts 4 32. <clears throat> All the believers were one in heart and mm -hmm. mind. No one claimed that any of, of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord, is, the Lord Jesus, and Amen. much grace was upon them all. And 34, nor was there any among them. There, there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the Amen. money from the cells, Amen. and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had Amen. Made. See, that's how the first church began. They ate together. They lived together. They sold their land and brought the money to at the feet of uh, Peter, Paul. I mean Peter, who was the chief, uh, the head apostle. They they ate together. They said that they didn't think of whatever's mine. I didn't think it was not yours. That means I went to your house and eat anything and sit wherever and do whatever I want because I'm your sister. You see that? I'm not a stranger. If Morella invites me, I'm Morella. I can go into your fridge and eat. Can I? Because I'm your sister. If you had a real sister, your flesh in the, uh, your sister would walk in and go into the fridge. You wouldn't mind, would you? But here we, we hesitate. We do. We should. We should. Everything should be one, like one. And what mine is yours. What's yours mine. That's how they were together. And that's how the unity was in the first book of the Acts. They were in one accord in the upper room. When the Holy Spirit fell upon them, they were one, united. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Amen. I don't think we, the church today, have reached to that level yet. Where we could just uh, say what's mine is belongs to you and what's yours belongs to me. Not yet. <laughs> okay, we're still working on it. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what we are. We are a family of God. We are the children of God. We're one family, and we have to think in that way and look at each other upon it as one. One, not oh that sister, oh that miss so and so. No, we're one family. Amen. Praise God. Okay, Colossians four. To where were we? Colossians chapter three. Amen. God is a good God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 14. Verse. 
And above all, these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Above all, put on love. Above all. Above everything else. Nothing else is important. This is the number one important thing. Above all. When you said this is the priority. Amen? This is the priority. That you put love, put on love, which binds. Love is what puts us together. I don't know, Sister Rebecca. But when I first met her, I just felt like, you know, that attraction, that love. Because I know she's a sister in faith. You understand? When I was walking through the mall and I saw a poster on the, in the store, it says a uh, uh, sales lady, Luca, da, da, da. at first of all I thought, oh, my sister, she needs a job. So right away I texted her, I said, here's an email, send them your resume. I said, do you have your resume ready? She said, yes, I send it right away. Wow, it's it love that binds us together. I don't know her, I've not met her. Only three weeks ago we met a Jane and Faye. But what brings us together? Is the Spirit of God is in her, the same Spirit of God draws us to one another. Amen. And God is love. Amen? If we cannot love one another, that means God is not in us. Amen? And that love has to be manifested. We have to show the love. Amen? If your actions speak louder than your words. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse ch first, ch first John, chapter four, verse twelve. Here we're emphasizing on the love. How the importance of love. First John. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love in perfect, is, perfect, is perfected in us. Amen. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God abides in us. Amen? Isn't that what I just said? God is in our midst because of love that joins us together. Hallelujah. No one man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is what perfected. Brings perfection in us. I encourage one another. If we, if we have an issue with one another, we say, okay, my sister, this and this. We sort it out and bring perfection. Amen? Perfection. God is in the business of molding and shaping us. And washing and cutting off those things which are not of God. Amen? God is a good God. He loves us. And among, and the, the last and final, I'm going to, 1 Corinthians 13. Paul emphasizes, he said, there are three things. Faith, love, and what's the third one? Who knows that scripture? Three things are important, Paul says. Faith, love, and what? Hmm? Charity is love, yes. What's the third one? Chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. He said, though I speak. Chapter first, first one. He said, if, if I, c I could be a, a super apostle or a leader or pastor or whatever you want to call yourself and you have the gifts of healing you have the gifts of this and all that but if you don't have love he says all your gifts are of no void they have no value because the gifts are from God 
And the gift is operating in you. We see some pastors uh, right now, so many scandals taking place where pastors are they're living a life of immorality. But yet, when they pray for people, the blind people are healed. The, why is that? Because the gift of God which is in them is active. The, go- the gift will continue to operate when they pray for people. But their salvation is at question. Amen? Are they right with God? The gift is operating. Yes, God always does what he says. He says he never return, repent of that. If he's given you a gift, he will not take it back. The gift is there. But we see people who are, uh, have so many, they're gifted, they're speaking in tongues, or you could be healing, and we're, we're just awed by that. With, oh, well, you know, oh, this pastor, this, 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 this. We go run chasing them here, chasing them there. But yet, do we really know them, their real life? He says, Paul says, he says, even if you have speaking in the, though I speak with tongues of men and angels, but have not love. Like a God. You could be doing great and mighty works, you signs and wonders and speaking in tongues and healing, but you don't have love. He said, what happened? Like and of angels God. and have not love. I have come, you, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging you just noise. Just noise in the eyes of God. Oh. You're nothing. You're just making noise. Although I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries, you can have all the wisdom, you can have all the knowledge, all the prophecy in you, but so that I could remove mountains and have not charity and I do not have love for my brother or my sister. So what good are those gifts? What good is it you're prophesying? The gift is there, but the actions is not backing up your faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I, I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it you profits not. me nothing. All oh, the good that you could give, burn your body, you could give, give out charity to people, you could give out money to people in the... In the other religions, the Hindus and the, the Muslims, they believe in giving out charities, go feed the poor, and they do that. They do. Their faith is on good works. Their faith is based on good works. That the more good works they do, the greater they have favor in those. So they trade their balance. I go for one that said, what does your good works, but don't you do any bad works? Said, yeah, but my good works are more than my bad. So God is going to accept me because of the good works that I did. <laughs> that's the idea that they have but it, uh, with us it's different it says you could do all the good work but there's no love see the priority and the number one requirement God is asking us to love where I am today is different I am before I was always like feeling depressed and low and this and that, or does this, 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 whatever situation. When God came, dealt with me, he told me that no matter what happens, no matter how people treat me or, or whether they talk to you or not, they ignore you, whatever, that I am to continue to love them. Amen? That's when God started to deal with me and I understood that. He said, if you don't love your brother, you are a murderer. Where's Solomon? He can find me that verse. Solomon? Solo? Can you please find me that verse? It's John. I can't remember now. It just came to my mind. It says, if you do not love your brother or your sister, you are a murderer in the eyes of God. That's a serious offense. For sure, definitely, you will go to hell if you are a murderer. Amen? That's how serious God in God's eyes. The emphasis today is on love. And the love will bring us into unity. When we are in unity, we can do great exploits. We can do great works. And we can carry out the vision that God has called us to do. All our fasting and all our prayers would be in vain if there's no unity in us and there's no love in us. Amen? You can fast all you want. You can pray day and night all you want. But there's discord in our midst. 
there's no love in our midst, we will not move forward. Because where there's unity, then God commands a blessing upon us. Amen? Go ahead, my sister, read that for me, please. Whosoever hurts his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding, abiding in, in him. him. First Amen. John Can you read it again? 10. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. First John 3.15. That's not my word. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's important. That's how important it is. This is our emphasis today. That we as new awakening of the church, we must, he said, one of the verses it says, I don't know if it's before that or what. It says, you must love your brother. Oh my God. When I read that verse years ago, I thought, God is saying, I must love him, my brother. I must love my sister. I don't care whether they like you or not, whether they, how they treat you. You know, Pastor Macklin is our perfect, she's my perfect mentor. She has been through hell, how people have mistreated her. But when she sees you, she fall, she just loves you to herself. She just loves you so much that even the person who hated them, what's wrong with her? I don't like her. Why is she all over me and hugging me and loving me? That's one thing I learned from Pastor Macleod, our mentor. I love her so much because today I am here because of her. Because she has been a perfect example. She exampled, lived it out before my eyes. I saw it. The witches would come in here. They would give her food. She would eat it. To say, okay, let God. Let them know who, that the God lives in me. The real and the true living God. She would hug those people. She would embrace them. And show them love as they walk in here. I, I said, I can't do that, Lord. How can she do that? You understand what I'm saying? So I had to say, no, I want to be like that. Pastor. I would cry out to God, I'd say, Lord, fill my heart with your compassion. Fill my heart with your love. And she would tell me that those people, they said, Jesus, when he was on the cross, he died. Those people who were killing him, they were persecuting him. They were, what did he say at the last? He said, Father, forgive them. For what? They don't know what they're doing. So if that person whom you hate and you say is your enemy, that person doesn't know what they're doing. But you show love to them. Paul said that when you show love to enemies, you what? You pouring coals of fire on their head. I don't know where that scripture is right now, but I know it. You pour coals of fire. That means what does the coals of fire represent? What does it represent? Judgment. When I love my enemy to death, I love him. Even Paul said, No, 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 stay away from me. I don't like you. Ah, she did this to me. She said that about me. I said, oh, Paul, come on. You're my brother. Oh, I love you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see that? When you love your enemies, Jesus didn't say hate your enemies. He said in the Old Testament, he says, eye for an eye. If he punched me in my eye, I got to punch him back. That was the Old Testament. <laughs> but Jesus came... <laughs> You know, the, old, the new covenant is more harder than the Old Testament. The Old Testament is somebody beat you, eh, beat you back. You got what you, you deserve it. <laughs> but Jesus says, love your enemies. Amen? Amen? Love your enemy. You will win your enemy with the love. And he'll be your brother. Now he's no longer your enemy. He'll be your best friend. Amen? They, the Lord says, it says, I will make your enemies to be your friend. How can they, how can, when you show love to enemies, they'll become your friends. Hallelujah. They'll give up on you. There's, ah, something's wrong with you. What, what, why are you showing me love? What, what is this? Why are you behaving that way? I don't like you. Just stay away from me. Then, no, you're my sister. I love you so much. Finally, that sister has to give up. Okay. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Are we getting it today? Are we, are we, 
understand that he says, Therefore thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and they shall, the Lord shall what? Reward thee. Amen? Amen? So let's work on this thing together. Let's come in unity. Let's not love one another. Let's continue to love one another and walk in unity. So we can do the great works of God. We cannot accomplish anything. We say we have a vision to do this. We have a vision to do that. But yet there's discord. There's no unity. There's no love. Everybody's scattered. Everybody's on doing their own thing. No! Let's come together in one accord. Amen? To God be the glory. Did we learn something today? Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.